This is a story of a young dynamic cataract surgeon. He had a bad start of his day, told off by his HOD, was so stressed that he almost fell in theater. And he even had to shout to his nurse for keeping the wrong set of intraocular lens for the day surgery. With an agitated and stressed mind, he started his FACO and to add to his woes, his instruments were not playing the game. And then he realized that his worst nightmare was happening in front of his eyes. He can panic, the team can be unsupportive, he can even get angry at the instruments and staff. He may even be tempted to fish into the vitreous cavity with a phaco tip or needle to get the nucleus. A drawback of this approach is that there is a risk of uncontrolled vitreous traction with subsequent retinal tears and retinal detachment. But our surgeon remained calm and composed. He did a good anterior vitrectomy, removed the cortical matter and implanted the intraocular lens in the sulcus. He ensured that the corneal wound is sealed and the pupil is round. Our patient straight away underwent vitrectomy. Here you can see the nucleus floating in the vitreous. We are doing a vitrectomy. Now, with a phaco fragmentome, the nucleus is engulfed and is emulsified, broken into fragments and is sucked and removed. We have to be careful here because there is a risk of catching the retina and inducing retinal tears. When dealing with a case of drop nucleus, what a VR surgeon expects is a relatively quiet eye with a clear cornea, good intraocular pressure and a round pupil which makes his job much easier. A three-port pass plana vitrectomy is a standard approach. After a core vitrectomy and clearing the vitreous around the nucleus, the nuclear fragments on the surface of retina is lifted to the mid-vitreous and is broken into fragments and is aspirated. Here you can see the nucleus in the vitreous very close to the retina. We are doing a vitrectomy and now the vitreous around the nucleus is cleared to avoid vitreoretinal traction. Now the nucleus is engaged by phaco fragmentome and lifted to the mid vitreous. Here we are using endo illuminator as a second instrument. Using phaco energy, the nucleus is emulsified and broken into smaller pieces. These smaller fragments are easily sucked in and removed. Screen for any tear at the periphery which would have occurred during anterior manipulations during nucleus drop. If only soft cortical matter is there in the vitreous, it can be removed with vitrectomy probe alone. In this video, you can see us trying to remove the epinucleus with vitrectomy probe, but it's not that effective. But when we reduce the cut rate, more amount of cortical matter was sucked in and it was removed more effectively. Another technique of removal of drop nucleus is using perfluorocarbon liquids which are heavy liquids which float the retained lens fragments which would minimize the retinal injury during posterior phaco emulsification. In this video you can see us clearing the vitreous around the nucleus and on screening the periphery we noted a retinal hole which was later lasered. This highlights the importance of good peripheral screening during vitrectomy. Here we are injecting PFCL which is forming a larger bubble and the nucleus fragment will float on it. Once the nucleus fragment reaches more anteriorly, it can be removed safely. The PFCL bubble will act as a cushion and will protect the retina. Once the bigger pieces are removed, the PFCL is taken out of the eye and the smaller fragments can be aspirated and sucked out. Don't forget to induce a posterior vitreous detachment if that doesn't occur spontaneously and also mind the anterior vitreous which frequently causes tractions on the peripheral retina. If it's a very hard nucleus in the vitreous, it poses challenges to the fragmentome. In these cases, the surgeon can use PFCL to float the whole lens out of the eye and deliver it through the corneal wound. But nowadays, we rarely do this procedure. And in this video, it's a hard nucleus and we are injecting PFCL under the nucleus. 
and you can see the nucleus swimming on the PFCL and once it reaches the anterior chamber, it can be taken out through the corneal wound. Management of intraocular lens is almost similar to that of a nucleus drop. Here you can see an intraocular lens in the vitreous very close to the retina. We are doing a vitrectomy and now the vitreous around the intraocular lens is cleared to reduce vitreoretinal traction. Now we are grasping the haptic of this intraocular lens with the end grasping forceps and is brought slowly into the anterior chamber. Once it reaches the anterior chamber, it can be taken out through the corneal wound and a secondary intraocular lens can be implanted in the same or different sitting. This is a case of retinal detachment in a child who had a previous cataract surgery and is left a phagic. You can see here a stuck haptic on the retina. This probably would have been a forgotten dropped haptic during cataract surgery and which would have induced retinal detachment. Once a dropped nucleus or dropped intraocular lens is managed, the next task is to implant an intraocular lens. Here we are doing a scleral flap to suture the haptic of scleral fixated intraocular lens. SFI oil is used in cases when there is no capsular support. After inserting scleral fixated eye oil, the haptic has to be sutured and secured. Or an anterior chamber intraocular lens can be implanted, especially if the anterior chamber has adequate depth and the cornea has good endothelial count. If there is adequate anterior capsular rim present after lens removal, the intraocular lens can be inserted in the sulcus. Either a three-piece intraocular lens or an intraocular lens with large haptic are good choice as they provide better centration. Nucleus drop is a dreaded complication that can happen on table. What the patient expects is reassurance that the problem is being addressed. Remember, it can happen to the very best of us. Key is to remain calm and professional. Always have a VR backup and get your team prepared for such an event. Thank you.